narcissistic parents and emotional invalidation. Let's talk about that. My name is Lise Colucci. I'm here to help you with understanding things related to narcissists and how to heal from them. Today, we're talking about narcissistic parents and the emotional invalidation that they give you in your life. This is so diminishing and so hurtful and so frustrating. It's probably one big reason people stay in communication. Remember that when you're with a narcissistic person, there's always a hook. There's a reason you don't walk away. It's not just because they're your parent, if it's a narcissistic parent, right? It's not just the guilt you might feel that society says you're supposed to do this, that, or the other with a parent, right? There's a hook for you personally. For a lot of people, this is the hook. The emotional invalidation. Children need validation. We require it as humans in community, in families, with a couple, with any other human being, we require reciprocal validation for our autonomous feelings, beliefs, and life experience. It's what makes relationship rich and whole when we can exchange back and forth our own versions of reality, because then we have a mix of two people or three people or an entire family's worth of experiences right? And it's interesting. It isn't a threat. It is not a threat if you and I think differently and feel differently about have, about an experience that we share. It is not a threat. It's beautiful. It means that there's more than one way to experience a situation and somebody else's experience and feelings are equally valid to my own. Narcissistic people will not grant you that because they need to conduct and control and, and, and be in charge of everybody else's feelings as it relates to them. They need their delusion of reality to be the only reality that exists in the room, in the family, in the group, whatever it is, okay? So this emotional invalidation can be such a hook because as we're seeking the emotional validation or any form of validation, we're seeking and seeking, even though we know we won't get it, there's a piece of us that requires it. and. We're not going to get it there and logically we know that, but the little kid in us when this is our parent when this is the person that raised us that person that we grew up with. We need that validation to feel okay about self it's what children gain from healthy environments right and without it we're constantly seeking it in our lives and so it can be a hook to that parent because we can try every angle that we can think of and every approach that we can think of in order to achieve this unachievable goal that we're seeking in life but the thing is you're never going to get it from that person that person is toxic it is their problem it is their personal experience if you look at it like this give them the emotional validation of being who they are autonomous from you separate from you and recognize that it isn't your problem it's their problem they can't validate they can't see other people's experience they can't accept and allow other people to be who they really are okay they just can't and so stop seeking what you can't get from them it's difficult it is painful, but if it is the hook that's keeping you in that cycle with a toxic parent or a toxic partner, whatever it is in your life, recognize that it is not about you. It is about them. It is about their inability to be able to relate to you in a healthy way and find other places to find that healthy relationship. Tell me what you've experienced in that in regards to that. And let's keep talking about this. Start out with therapy or coaching or a mentor or someone that you can that you know is there for your well being and you know has some experience with this because that that exchange builds your self esteem that exchange builds your ability to trust yourself and your ability to be out in the world feeling okay about yourself if you need coaching group coaching peer support or anything like that check out the information in the description of every video so emotional invalidation is where your feelings your experience of life and how you view the world all of it your you you're not seen you're not heard and you're not responded to in a way that feels like the other person is actually hearing who you are what you're saying what you're feeling okay and, and how does a narcissistic parent invalidate your experience of life because they are masters of manipulation and masters of invalidation 
some of the things that they do are they're only allowed to have the emotional responses that they deem appropriate so whatever they think you're supposed to feel is how you're supposed to respond so your truth and who you are and how you actually feel and respond to the world doesn't matter to them. And in fact, they don't wanna hear it. And there's lots of things that they'll do. They'll gaslight you, they'll twist the truth. They'll, they'll do anything to diminish and devalue and invalidate what you're actually feeling. They will deny your truth and deny your feelings by saying that that is not how you actually feel or that is not what actually happened. That kind of gaslighting can make you start to doubt yourself and doubt your own experience in life, especially when it's coming from your mother or your father. If you try to talk to them about this, if you try to talk to them about feeling invalidated or feeling something that that they did that hurt you, they will twist your words sometimes and make it so that they are the victim or they're the ones that were hurt or like you're not listening to them or you know they get you so upset that you get reactive because they're not listening not listening not listening and then when you're reactive they say look how look how you treat me look how you are to me i mean all narcissists do this but when it's coming from a parent and when it's coming from your own mother or father it's kind of an extra level of invalidation because these are the people who are supposed to want your well-being and want what's best for you right for your whole life right and and with a narcissistic parent that's just not happening another way they deny your truth is by basically saying i don't know what you have to complain about i don't know what you have to complain about look how much worse it is over there oh my gosh you've had it so good i've been such a good mother right i have been there for you your whole life what are you complaining about so and so doesn't even have a mother these children don't have parents right so they will make it so that your experience feels like you're being selfish or you're wrong or you're being dramatic for experiencing the toxic things that they have done to you, especially when you're talking about covert narcissistic parents. In fact, a lot of this is a covert tactic, but sometimes it can be quite overt where they just basically say you're wrong. You're wrong. That's not how it happened. Oh, and don't they love to play the martyr. Narcissistic mothers are famous for this, playing the martyr so that Poor them, you're not even allowed to have a real feeling. You're not allowed to have your own experience of anything, right? It has to be filtered through how she experiences the world and what will hurt her and what won't hurt her and how she'll react to things. So narcissistic fathers, I think, do this part more. The joking, the subtle joking, the overt joking, making you the butt of the joke, making you feel shame for who you are in it through humor, and using humor and then saying you don't have a sense of humor or you're too sensitive or or oh my gosh I was just joking can't you take a joke come on get over it so they dismiss their own behavior and they invalidate your feelings about how hurtful that treatment is don't you dare disagree with them if you disagree with them you're going to be invalidated in many ways first of all they'll gaslight you because you're wrong obviously and they're right okay they're going to twist your words they're going to say things like yeah well but i mean i can remember being dismissed in a way where everything i said that i thought was like really important to say and then i realized was being disagreed with so i was either disagreeing with something said or i had some said something and that was disagreed with was met with well as if i'm stupid and my opinion doesn't matter and i'm dismissed and i'm invalidated for having any thoughts or another thing they might do is you disagree with them and they say well i'm sure you don't mean that Actually, I did mean that because I wouldn't have said it if I didn't, but right. Yeah, I couldn't possibly disagree with them. They're always right. Oh, and if you try to seek therapy, if you try to seek help, if you get coaching, whatever it is, they're going to blame your coach, therapist, or mentor, or friend, or whoever it is for your changing opinions. They're going to blame them and say they're the problem. They're making you not like me. They are, they are, they are, right? So they're using, they're dismissing the help that you're getting because it doesn't serve their agenda because it doesn't serve you in serving them the supply they want from you and then instead of saying that's great i'm glad you're working on yourself and you're getting this healing they say well that person must be that person must be out to get me that person is clearly wanting you to hate your mother clearly wanting you to hate your father right toxic 
oh, have you ever gotten an apology from a narcissistic parent? I'm sorry, but you were really, I'm sorry, but you know, always the I'm sorry buts. So another way that they will invalidate your experience and your emotions is by making you feel crazy or making you feel broken or making you feel like you're wrong for just who you are and that you're emotionally unstable or that you're an emotional mess or you're an emotional wreck and they will feed into that. Well, I know how you get. Well, I know how upset you get. Well, I know, you know, things like that to help make you because so usually there's an element of truth. Yeah, you do get upset. You get upset because of their toxic behavior and the way that you're being treated, right? And you're not able to set boundaries and you're not able to individuate from these toxic parents and be autonomous and, and have thoughts of your own because they don't allow you to within that relationship. So they, the things they're saying have an element of truth in your mind, you're thinking, Well, I do do those things. So you then start self gaslighting and believing the indoctrination that they're pouring into you of lies. Okay. And they're invalidating your experience. It is such a destructive form of gaslighting all the while, while they're doing this, they're faking concern. Well, you know, I'm really concerned about you. I'm only doing this because I love you. I only want what's best for you. It's all I've ever wanted right? No, what they really want is what's best for themselves and they're using you to get it. They are vicariously living through you. And when you're not living the life that they choose for you to live or thinking the things they choose for you to think, they attack those things and force you back to agree, agreeing with them that the way they think, feel, or experience is the only way there is to think, feel, and experience. Sometimes toxic parents will even fully ignore you. They will just not listen They'll just talk about something else, total dismissal, or even to the form of silent treatment. So it doesn't, it isn't beyond a toxic parent. It's not just in toxic romantic relationships that the silent treatment happens. That is a form of dismissal and a form of ignoring and devaluing somebody's experience and their emotional life. It's a total emotional invalidation. If you have questions, comments, or anything, please leave them in the in the comment section. I love the community here and the and the back and forth exchanges that we have. So please leave them there. 